the Beretta APX. Today on Max Headspace 9mm. Hi guys, as usual, I have an interesting story about a gun to tell you. It started in my local gun shop. One day, my very first exposure to the Beretta APX was not a good one. I instantly took a dislike to the gun. It was used for sale for $440. It was black, in very good condition, but uh, out of curiosity, I asked the salesman if I could handle it, and he let me. I wasn't impressed. I was looking at it as just another Glock imitator. It was high time for Beretta to uh, create a polymer pistol. Uh, that was way overdue. And I have a tremendous amount of respect for Beretta. They've been around longer than anybody else. They've made some of the best guns in history, uh, not just in pistols, all across the board, and at a very reasonable price. When they came out with the APX, I just looked at it and I thought it was gimmicky, and I didn't think it offered anything that a Glock couldn't do better. So I said no thanks and I went on my way. But it kind of got to nagging me a little bit because I know and I have tremendous amount of faith that Beretta is a good company. So I read a few articles about the gun and I watched a few YouTube videos and nobody had anything very bad to say about it. In fact, most of the reviews are very good, especially where reliability is concerned. Well, as I was shopping around, as the internet tends to do, some ads came up. And uh, one was on Gunbroker. Uh, this gun store down in Texas had six of them for sale for $329 with a Cerakote flat dark earth finish. Um, this exact gun. You know I've been shooting it because look at that muzzle. That's actually pretty cool. It looks all charred and blackened. Um, I think it'll wipe off. It always does. This gun, Cerakote finish. $329 in the box with two mags. Well, I was in a buying mood that day and I picked it up. I figured at that price, how could I possibly lose? I'll always be able to sell it for that. When I got it, I looked it over really good and uh, as usual for Beretta, it was very well made. You know, I field stripped it, I looked inside. I, I really liked the way it was put together. Uh, there's a lot of things about this gun that are very well designed and well manufactured. I was really impressed. One thing I do like about this gun is the feel in the hand. Uh, Glock grips are very blocky. This gun is no bigger than a Glock, really, in any of the pertinent dimensions. But the grip is one of the best in the hand of any polymer pistol double stack that I have ever experienced. And one thing that I love about this gun is how all the controls that are important to you when you're using this gun are well within reach of a normal hand. I can drop the mag easily, not always the case with a Glock, and uh, the trigger, everything feels like a, it feels like a small gun in my hand, it really does. Um, and everything is very, very smooth. They have refined surfaces on these. They're not just stamped sheet metal with rough edges that you have to then go ahead and improve over time or replace. This gun is good to go right out of the box. There are a few things that I did to it just as a matter of course because it was inexpensive and I really wanted to do that and I saw areas for improvement. But I love this gun. I'm actually growing very, very fond of it. I have fired 2,500 rounds through this and I have not had one malfunction of any kind. And that is not something I can say about any Glock that I've ever owned. I have given this to women and very young people, I guess you could say children, no limp wristing malfunctions with this of any kind. It does everything I want it to precisely as I want it to every single time. It's plenty accurate enough 
I would like to get this against my Glock 17 and see which one I am able to shoot more accurately on a given day. Uh, but I got to tell you, the slide serrations, everything about this gun, it makes sense. I should have given Beretta more credit because, to be honest with you, every single thing about this gun, it's not superfluous and it's not just fluff. This gun actually makes a lot of sense. I love the beaver tail. It just hugs your hand. It's like a handshake from a good friend. Uh, I love the grip is round or elliptical in my hand instead of blocky like a 2x4. Um, I love the fact that it just doesn't feel that big or that heavy. And the finger grooves fit very, very nicely. I don't have any reason for stippling or a rubber grip to go over this. It just works beautifully. One of the areas that I improved is I went out to an aftermarket firm and got a, a striker retainer. It's a little spring, size of a ballpoint pen spring, and a little stainless steel thing that looks like a finishing nail. Very small, but highly polished and well-made. It's only 20 bucks, with the promise that it would decrease the, um, the reset and the, um, the weight of the trigger by about a pound. And it seems to have done that. Uh, the other thing I did was I got a solid steel recoil rod assembly. In every way, it looks identical to the polymer one that was in here, but if a steel one is available at a reasonable price, I'm always going to get it because I've always found that adding weight to the muzzle end of the gun never hurts anything. It's not that it's going to last any longer or anything like that. It's just any little bit of weight. And a flashlight's a good idea, one thing I'm shopping for. Um, but the gun is pretty sh uh, flat shooting anyway, and the recoil and muzzle flip are very manageable, especially compared to a Glock. I think I handle this gun just a little bit better. So let's look at trigger pull. Okay, so it's got the dingus on the front here, which you definitely feel when you grab this gun and you rest your finger on the trigger. There's a little bit of slop, just a little bit and then you come up against your resistance. There really isn't any movement at all. It's just a wall. And you increase your pressure on it, and you increase your pressure until it breaks. Now that twangy sound that you just heard, it wasn't there before with the original striker uh, spring retainer. Uh, with this new product, it makes that sound but that's never an issue when you're actually firing real bullets out of it. So it sounds like a little, I don't know, a little twangy spring inside the gun now, which only you know happens with dry firing and it's not a big deal at all. I do a lot of dry firing with this and I'm used to it now, but I, I know that you're noticing it. Okay, so I'm back against the back of the trigger. I haven't released it yet. I'm gonna go forward the reset is incredibly short. You notice that? And then you just put pressure on it in a rearward direction, a tiny bit of movement, and you get your striker. And again, reset, pressure, movement, and a very predictable click. I like the trigger on this thing. You know, a lot of people compare this to some other of the new polymer striker fired guns like the uh, CZ P10C and uh, most of the time people say they like the P10C trigger better than this. I am one of those few people that like this trigger better. I don't necessarily think the P10C is my favorite trigger. I'm really picky about triggers. It just doesn't happen to be my cup of tea. So anyway for $329 and these things are going really cheap, um, is it Half as good as a Glock? Absolutely. And the only place where I think Glock is superior to this is there's so much market support out there for Glocks. You can get aftermarket magazines, you can get all kinds of upgrades and parts to change to customize a Glock any way you could possibly imagine. Uh, this is not there yet, but I expect it will be. Just give them it a little time. But um, I think the reason Beretta is releasing these so cheap is because they kind of need to, to be able to make a splash on the market. So if I were you and you're looking for a polymer pistol, a um, maybe not a Glock killer, but definitely worth having. 
you might want to pick up a Beretta APX, APX right now because I don't think they're going to stay at this price for long. People are starting to discover these, and uh, they're really quite a nice gun. So I want to do a little uh, box opening and field strip for you. This is the case that comes with the gun. This is what shipped to me. Now, one thing I will tell you about this right off the bat that is a little unusual is the way these latches are. Uh, I'm used to latches flipping from the bottom up. These flip from the top down. And that's a little weird. It's like it catches me over and over again. I'm constantly opening up this case upside down and all the parts are like where they shouldn't be. So just watch that if you get this gun. It just goes to show what uh, reverse thinking Beretta used in designing it. Everything is reconsidered. I actually really think this is a good idea. It's just different from every other latch on every other case I've ever opened before. So inside, the gun comes pretty much like this. Uh, you get the gun, two magazines, and uh, some back straps. Now you get these extra back straps here. This is the smallest one, and this is the one that gives you a little bit extra right in uh, under the beaver tail. Uh, I actually like this one here because I love a little bit of curve in my palm right there. But if you look at these, they're really quite intricate. I mean, the checkering is some of the most, uh, I don't know, decorative and ornate I've ever seen. It's not just these little pyramids, but it has little tiny grooves in between them. Everywhere on the plastic of these things is really beautiful design details. And, you know, I never really thought that was very important before, but when you get it, you actually kind of appreciate it. You can get an entire um, plastic grip module lower for this gun for 50 bucks, uh, including the back straps. So if you want to go with a different color, you know, say you get the black gun, it has a black slide, and um, you want a green or you want a brown like this or you want a gray, you can do that. They call it wolf gray. And this is called Dark Earth, and the green is, I guess, I don't know, camo, but, uh, or OD green. So mine is Cerakote, so I'm going to just stay with this color. Nothing else would look very sensible with it. It comes with a loader that's, uh, eh, not very good. Most of these loaders that come with the guns are just not very good at all. I can hand load my magazines quicker without that. Um, so you get two magazines. Now since then, I have ordered two of these 21 round magazines. And they're kind of interesting, I will say. Uh, at first I was kind of turned off. They look a little bit like Frankenstein's shoe there or some kind of a disco go-go boot. But uh, <laughs> they work really well. And one of the beautiful things about the design of this magazine being designed just like it is I think even Beretta, you know, thought about this, is with the curve in the front, which I've never seen really in any of these extended magazines before, you have a tactile um, signal to your hand, which is the front or the back of the magazine. It's very easy to wind up grabbing a magazine wrong unless you're feeling the top or something. Well, with this, you could tell in the dark, you could tell behind your back or when you're not looking, what is the front of the magazine? I think that's a really brilliant idea. More of them should be designed this way. It doesn't look great, but we'll get used to it. It has a great function. Now I told you uh, earlier that I replaced the guide rod, and this is a really unusual guide rod. But I will tell you something. As much as this looks like a uh, mangled up uh, barbed wire fence, it actually is amazing. I will say that the slide racks very easily, and even though the height over bore on this gun is probably a little higher than a Glock, I do not experience as much muzzle jump with this gun as I do with the Glock. So I actually think that the guide rod has something to do with that. The way the guide rod handles the recoil. I also think that the, this particular style of guide rod is the reason why um, this gun is so reliable. 
you know, with my Glocks, um, I would expect that I'll have some kind of a malfunction maybe around on average about every thousand rounds. I've got 2,500 with this, not one malfunction or anything even close to it yet. And I think the guide rod is the reason. Uh, because of the way this thing works, it handles the practice ammo, the 115 grain, a lot better. Um, you know, you're going to have less malfunction with heavier ammo. Just because it's more powerful, it throws the slide back harder, you get a more complete cycling. Well, um, I've had all different grain weights through this, and it just runs perfectly fine. So I can't help but think this guide rod is the secret. You might see some imitation of this coming down the pike. Uh, this is the original guide rod. I got the all steel guide rod in here. And then this thing is the original striker spring retainer. Um, it's a plastic part with a captive spring on it. And the one that's in here is not captive. It's a stainless steel uh, rod with a keeper on one end and an uncaptive spring. But let's do a quick field strip here just for uh, the sake of it. So the thing about this gun that I will say I don't like quite as much as Glock has to do with the field strip. Um, you know, field stripping a gun is something you do quite a bit for maintenance. And in the case of this one, the field strip is not as easy as some. Glock, I could do it very, very easily. But with this gun, you have a few more steps and you got to have a little bit of hand strength. I can't push, you're supposed to push this button through so that you can tip this up. And some days it's just a little too stiff to be able to do that with my bare hands. So I need a little help. And I think that this is one of the things about this gun that I would change if I could. Now you can always use a magazine, push on the button right there, and then you can swing that lever down. So for women or people who don't have a lot of hand strength, I don't think that's a great thing. Um, it does take a lot of hand strength to do this, but if you can do that, it's really quite easy to, to field strip this gun. Now, there is another way. You saw me uh, pull the trigger. Um, some people don't like doing that, and Beretta provided something just for you if you're one of those people. It's a little button right here. If you don't want to pull the trigger to field strip this gun, instead of doing that, you can push this button. But I've got a little pet peeve I gotta share with you right now. I really actually kinda don't like all these reputable gun manufacturers like Beretta and Smith & Wesson making guns with all these workarounds so that you do not have to pull the trigger when you field strip it. Um, honestly guys, it's been over 50 years since guns were designed where dry firing was going to harm the striker or the firing pin. Um, those days are long gone. Guns are designed today so that you can dry fire them as much as you want without harm to the firearm at all. Except for 22s, you shouldn't do that too much with those, but even those, you know, you can do it. But the problem is a lot of people are afraid to dry fire their guns because they just, it just, gets to them. But if you can't tell if your gun is loaded or not, if you can't trust yourself to check the chamber every single time before you dry fire, you shouldn't own a gun. That's all there is to it. And I don't like when gun manufacturers support uh, people's, I don't know, weird tendencies where they're afraid. Being a gun owner means taking responsibility. And if you are not responsible enough to know the condition of your weapon and check it safely to determine whether it's loaded or not, you should not own a firearm. I'm telling you that right now. And uh, all those gun manufacturers out there, don't capitulate to people who shouldn't own firearms. Make guns for people who should own firearms and can check to see if their weapon is clear and safe. All right, enough said. I'm going to quit ranting. Now, once you take the slide off, you can remove 
your takedown or you could just leave it in you know just like that it's up to you kind of like a 1911 or uh, Browning high power you can take that out uh, but if you are going to take out the guts, and that's one of the beautiful things about this system, you pull this out, you pull a spring over and a pin, and this whole inside comes out as a unit. And this is why you can replace the plastic lower on this gun. Um, it's just that easy to replace the guts. And the serial number viewed through that window is uh, on the internal frame. So this is the gun inside of here. You can replace everything else uh, without a background check or any kind of fees. And this is the gun right here, which means that in time, I believe Beretta and, and uh, SIG and some of the other companies that are starting to go this direction will be able to offer you a variety of different guns, including maybe even sub guns and some really unusual hybrid weapons various sizes of these where you don't have to buy a new gun with a new background check. You can just transfer your gun here, which is the frame, into different receivers, different barrels, different parts, all can be bought over the internet and sent to your home. This is a fantastic new era and that is one thing that Glock does not offer yet. Uh, but based on their design, they're going to have to change their gun way too much to be able to do that. So I don't think they're going to be in the game with that very, very soon. So we're talking about Glock killers. Is this a Glock killer? Well, it actually could be. It's really growing on me a lot. I, uh, I love this gun. The more I shoot it, the more I love it. And the longer it goes without failing, the more I become really uh, enamored with it. Okay, your captive guide rod comes out just like that. It looks absolutely identical to the plastic one, but you can definitely feel the difference in weight, and that is the reason I got this. And then the barrel comes out. It is a beautiful barrel, very nice. No evidence of wear whatsoever. I'm looking at this thing. You'd never know that I shot 2,500 rounds through this. There is just no... It, it hasn't even worn through the finish yet. It's just unbelievable. There's a tiny little bit of wear down here, but it's barely noticeable. And of course, the inside's all black and cruddy because, you know, I don't clean it all that much, but it's really well machined. There's a lot to this. Got a lot of brass kind of like caked on this here. That won't hurt anything at all. But uh, I gotta tell you, this is just a very nicely made gun. And just like Glock, you, um, well, it's not exactly like Glock, but it's similar. You push a pin inside of this hole right here, and then this slide can come down just like a Glock. And then inside, you can kind of see here, see that shiny thing there? That is my striker retainer spring. And then the pin that's inside, that's, that's the thing that replaced this. And it's a much more robust part, and it gives that twangy sound when I dry fire it but um, it did lighten up the trigger by about a pound and it shortened the reset. So that's what it looks like on the inside and that's how relatively easy it is to field strip. And um, when you put it back together again, let me see. See, I haven't actually field stripped it all that much. Um, I have not cleaned this gun very many times. So we are supposed to do this, and then this uh, automatically fixes itself. So it's ready to go again. So let me see if I can do this with just hand strength. Push it, I push it through. No, probably not. Push it through with my thumb, which is a little stronger, and tilt that down. Okay, I was able, ah, I was able to do it without using the magazine floor plate. And then, well, it wants to spring back. And then you pull the trigger and watch the slide because it'll come you know, sliding forward pretty fast. Okay, and so here is your takedown pin. It is kind of sticking out just a little bit and it's pointing downward. And then when you go ahead and you put it back together again, it's good to go. So that's the way that works. And uh, I gotta tell you, 
When it comes to all the manual of arms of this, you got ambidextrous slide release. You have a reversible mag release. See, you can, in just a few minutes, take this out and reverse it to the other side if you're a lefty. Um, and I gotta say, this winds up in a better spot for me than the Glock. I like the shape of this. It fits my, my thumb better. Um, my thumb rests on the top of it when I'm shooting, and then I just move down a little bit uh, to release it. It's actually pretty uh, intuitive. Uh, this gun does not have a uh, loaded chamber indicator, but that's okay. I like the simplicity. I really don't need a loaded chamber indicator that much, but I will tell you I love my Springfield Armory XD and XDMs. Uh, they have a loaded chamber indicator. They've got a lot of bells and whistles that this gun doesn't have. So this is quickly becoming my go-to gun. If I can get another thousand rounds on this without a single uh, malfunction of any kind, it probably will replace Glocks as my go-to gun because reliability is everything in a go-to. And I'm going to do an upcoming video about what my current go-to firearms are. So um, thank you very much for, uh, for learning from me about the Beretta APX. And I'm going to tell you something. This gun is growing on me by the day. The more I shoot this, the more I love it. Um, when I take my blocks out, every now and then there's a malfunction. It's not very often, but you just kind of grow to learn that that's normal with guns. But when you fire a gun that has never malfunctioned for you, that really kind of changes your mind about what a gun should be pretty quickly. And I really like this gun, and, it, and these can be had for about half the cost of a Glock. And we'll see, over the next 10, 20 years, I'll bet you the support for this gun will be every bit as much as a Glock. I still love Glocks. They're a lot of fun because you, uh, you can do anything with them. You can modify and customize them any way you want. Not quite so with this. But who knows, in time, maybe. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching. This is Max Headspace 9mm. Have a good one.